In this video, we're going to look at using Live's audio to MIDI features. And these are best used as part of a compositional process to take maybe a short idea that you've created in audio and get a MIDI version of it that you could apply a different synthesizer sampled instrument to and continue on with your creative process. This is great if you're the type of person that hums melodies into your cell phone, recording those little bits or beatboxes into a microphone to get the idea for a drum groove because it'll allow you to take those ideas and easily convert those into really uh, nicely editable MIDI data. So let's try this out. Then this is the kind of procedure that I go through pretty often and that I create short musical ideas using the instruments that I have around. So I started with uh, just a drum groove here and this is pulled from the live library and then I like the groove so I started playing some bass on top of it. Nice simple bass line. And I started humming a melody and then playing that melody above it um, high up on the bass. Let's hear this addition. And then finally I went to one of my synthesizers, uh, which is a nice digital organ, and recorded an organ addition to it. And the organ part is always playing two notes at the same time, so it's dyads or chords the entire time uh, the, the track is playing. So there we have, this is a simple idea, but there's many things I don't like about it. You know, I don't love the drum groove. Uh, the tempo, I think, is a little bit too fast. Uh, the sound of the bass melody and the bass guitar aren't really what I was thinking. I think some synthesizers might be nice. It might be nice to have more of a string sound um, or more complex uh, synthesizer part for the organ track. So with that in mind, I'm going to start converting this, this track into MIDI tracks so I can then manipulate them further, change the sound of the drums, change the sound of the bass, change the tempo of the whole thing nicely, get different organ sounds, I, and I definitely want something different for the melody sound. So converting to MIDI will enable me to do all that. We'll start with the drums, and if I right-click on any audio clip, We'll see there's a variety of options. There's convert drums to new MIDI track, convert melody to MIDI track, convert harmony to MIDI track, and slice to new MIDI track. And these are what we're going to spend this week kind of focusing on. And we'll go from bottom to top. We'll start with convert drums to new MIDI track. And when I do this, uh, Ableton Live is analyzing the clip and finding all the transients and then assigning a drum sound to each one of those transients. And it's only going to look for kick, snare, and hat because as we've noted, that really is the foundation of a drum groove and it's going to take every transient and apply a kick snare or hat midi note to that transient and then we get this is the result or it looks something like this so if I solo this track now let's hear it this is the drum groove that was created and if I play it along with the original it's pretty darn close now, when you try this on your own, you'll probably find that it's going to be a different kit than this. The default is going to be to use a kind of a built-in electronic kit, but for me, I really like acoustic kits, so I changed the default, and there's a great place in the user library to do this. So if you go to your browser and go to the user library, you'll see an option for defaults. Inside of this folder will be an audio to MIDI folder. And inside of that are your drums to new MIDI, melody to MIDI, and harmony to MIDI folders. If you place a Ableton Live preset inside the drums to MIDI folder, the melody to MIDI folder, or the harmony to MIDI folder, that is the preset that will be used when you perform the convert to new drum track or convert to new melody track procedure. So I placed here the kit core session dry live preset because I like to go to acoustic sounds. I would suggest that you take a moment to put your favorite presets into those folders so when you're doing the convert to new MIDI track, you're getting a set of sounds that really, you know, meets your needs and your taste. So this drum groove is close, but it's not perfect. And you'll find that every time Live does one of these conversion processes, it is a computer running an algorithm, and there are a chance for slight errors. And let's see what kind of errors came up here and how we can correct them. But before we do, I just want to note that all the slight rhythmic variations of the original are there. And we also notice that the velocity variations uh, that are in the original are also represented as velocity variations in the MIDI here, which is quite nice. Now let's compare this to the original. So we're going to hear the original now. And then I'll switch over to mine. So 
So it's very close. Um, the sounds are a little different because obviously it's a MIDI preset. I'm not worried about that. I'm really concerned about the rhythms. And what I noticed right away is that this snare really shouldn't be there. What's happening is live is hearing this kick drum and it's thinking that a snare drum is hitting the same time. So I'm going to go through and just edit this a little bit and I'll just delete those notes that really shouldn't be there. Let's hear this one here. Let's hear the original. I have the original audio clip soloed, but I'm looking at the MIDI that I converted so I can kind of compare what I hear versus what I see. Let's try this out. So there we go. That looks about right. And it sounds about right. Let's hear it. So that's a good kind of adjustment, and we're getting right there. Now, the other thing is I'm hearing all these um, interesting little snare patterns in the original. Let's hear it. So it looks like these two and these two. I just shift-clicked on them and then used the down arrow key. So this drum groove is matching the original, and it's time to move on to converting the bass. So here's our bass track, and we would like to convert this to a synthesizer sound of some sort uh, that'll be more appropriate for the tune I kind of have in mind. And the procedure is very similar. I right click on the track, but this time I'm going to say convert melody to MIDI track. Now the term melody is a little bit misleading. Really this is monophonic, and it's designed for anything that's playing a single note at a time. So if you're doing a vocal part, a bass line, uh, a background line, anything that's a single note at a time, convert melody to MIDI track will be appropriate. And let's hear what we got here from this. All right, so we have one thing that's a little different. In the original, listen to the last note. It goes down, and in the converted version, so we can see that the MIDI version is going up on the last note, and the original one was going down. And that's a common error for live to make, which is just to be off by an octave, a really simple fix. Click on the note, hold shift, click the down arrow key, and it moves it by octave. And now the two things, now they'll match quite well. It's here. And I actually like them layered a little bit. I like them both in there. It's nice to have that layer. I like that last note to go the full length. Very cool. Now the next one we have will have a, a slightly different set of problems. Let's hear this, let's hear this line. So that right there is will be problematic. Live is really good at converting this when there are gaps between the notes, when there's very clear transients. And as you're playing with kind of conversion in mind, you want to play a bit staccato. You want to leave those gaps between notes. Because if you do, Live will recognize it very easily and convert without problem. But because I played that trill up high in the bass, Live might not get that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to right click and choose Convert Melody to New MIDI Track. I'm also going to be thinking that the sound that it's going to use will be that same one it used for bass, and I might want a different sound. So immediately I'll go to my hot swap, and maybe I'll choose something from the sampler, guitar and plucked. What about guitar open? That might be good. 
Well, let's hear this. Right along with the original. <laughs> Yeah, I missed that trill. We also have this spurious note right here that we know is not correct. Now, easy enough, select that and hit delete. Not appropriate. Now we're going to move on to converting a harmony track to MIDI. And let's solo this organ track and just hear it play. So this track is, a, is an audio recording, but it's always two notes played at the same time throughout the entire track. It's more of a guide tone uh, pattern. It is multiple notes played at a time. And anytime you have multiple notes played, we can consider it polyphonic or chordal, and we'd have to use the convert harmony to new MIDI track function. Now we can think of convert melody to MIDI track as convert monophonic material to a new MIDI track, and we can think of convert harmony to new MIDI track as convert polyphonic material to a new MIDI track. It will find all the notes in a chord and convert them. So I'll try that procedure right now and see what we get. Let's look at it. We're seeing multiple notes played at the same time, and let's compare this to the original. So it's very close. There are some obvious issues. The first one is just these spurious low notes. And I found pretty often that if I just select the lowest velocities in a track and hit the delete key, it's perfect. It gets rid of all the spurious notes. But we may find that we're unsure about some. And the zero key on your keyboard will disable certain notes. And by disabling them, we won't hear them, but we can test it out. And also, I know when I performed this, I only played two notes at a time. So I think this one up here is also incorrect. And I can just select that and hit zero. And really what happened is Ableton analyzed one of the harmonics of the note as an actual pitch that was being played. And let's hear this now. Well, that sounds great. I'm really enjoying how this is working, and the convert to new MIDI track uh, seem to function quite well. We do notice that there are some things that have to be edited after, but that's pretty easy to do, particularly if you're using that zero key and selecting velocities carefully. Now, you know, what I've done here really is a kind of best case scenario. I've played these things in with conversion in mind, so things do work pretty well. When you're just using kind of loops from a loop library or something from a song or your own poorly recorded uh, humming, it may take a little more uh, manipulation to get perfect, but really it's a wonderful feature. And do please go in the defaults and set up your own default melody, drum, and harmony to new MIDI presets.